Hey, how you doing? It's Clayton here from HowToDrawComics.net, and today what I'd like to talk about is a tweet that I came across that talked about J. Scott Campbell's artwork in somewhat of a negative light. It was really just a comment, actually, and uh, it's in regards to these two images. As you can see, very beautiful work, as you would expect from J. Scott Campbell. You can see the sleekness of that feminine figure, the shape, the gesture, absolutely beautiful. Just what you want to see in a comic book illustrated version of Black Widow here. Again, you can see the same thing. It's basically the exact same pose, different variation of the cover, I guess. And just what amazes me about J. Scott Campbell's work is how vivid and prominent those shapes are and how he manages to capture the gesture and the movement within the pose. There's so much of it there. And it's important to have in any comic book illustration. But here's the thing. J. Scott Campbell's work tends to rub certain people in the wrong way because of the way in which he goes about depicting women. Now, here's the thing. I get that. I understand it. You know, some people are going to have different views on that stuff. But uh, if you take a look here at some of the comments, and don't contact this person, of course, but, you know, on Twitter, she decides to share J. Scott Campbell's post of his artwork with the comment attached, I really cannot express how deeply I hate this. Just absolutely brutal. And then you've got her again underneath there saying, J. Scott Campbell, you're nothing. You know, and, and who is this person to say that? I mean, after all, J. Scott Campbell is a, is a very, very successful comic book artist who has been around in the industry for an extremely long time. There's a reason as to why he has had the wonderful opportunity to do so many covers. It's because he does great work. And then it was crazy to see this because I didn't expect it. Uh, so many people just jumped on the bandwagon here. I guess they follow this person and their views, but, you know, they're saying things like, you know, where are the intestines? And, you know, yeah, sure, the waist is pretty thin, but it's a stylized representation of a female character or a female figure, right? The the overall message the, of the pose and the, the energy within it, that's what's put first and foremost over any sort of realism, especially within comic book art. Okay, and then we've got uh, someone else here saying he deserves no rights. Uh, another person underneath that saying somewhere even Rob Liefeld is going, dude, that's not how you. Dr that's not how feet work. Uh, someone else saying that you know if they're not going to have intestines, they need to give them the the reproductive organ bump, which they didn't. Right, so you know just people getting on his case really. Uh, you know, telling him how physically impossible the pose is, and you get the idea. You know, J. Scott Campbell, he captures, uh, he catches a lot of flack for the work that he does from some people. In general, everybody loves it. That's why he's successful. But I thought this would be a great opportunity today just to talk about how this applies to you as a comic book artist, how it applies to me as a comic book artist, and, and what it all means. You know, if, if J. Scott Campbell's stylized female characters are are being hit on like this by certain people. Um, you know, what? how do you avoid that as a comic book artist? Can you avoid it? I mean, is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So let's take a look here for a moment at some actual real-life images of people, uh, in this case, a, a female figure who has composed herself into what would uh, be, for most of us, a very difficult position. Right, because this is the thing that a lot of people don't realize who criticize work like that of the art of J. Scott Campbell. Uh, they don't realize how how flexible the human body actually is. And what's so beautiful about these poses is the amount of energy and the sense of movement within them, which is exactly what we are always trying to capture within our work as comic book artists because we want to see those characters move on the page. They're, they're drawn within a sequence. 
Okay, cool. So uh, let's take a look at some other examples here. You know, where where are the intestines, right? You could say very much the exact same thing here. If you look at the positioning of her chest and her pelvis and then her legs, I mean, that would be at face value something that most people would say is impossible. I mean, heck, the, the way in which her legs would normally be standing have, has pretty much inverted there. Uh, she's also flying, which is another impossibility, right? Um, you know, and you could go through these over and over again. Uh, it goes for not only uh, women, but also uh, men as well. You know, just, I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, obviously, uh, I don't know if she's just holding herself up there, but uh, just free laying in the air on one arm. But hey, I mean, if she is another feat of the, the human figure that most people wouldn't realize is actually possible. So, you know, there's that, right? But then in comic book art, we're typically trying to push reality even further than this. We want to, we want to make everything much larger, larger than life. We want to push the poses of our characters, accentuate the anatomy to give a vivid visual experience to our audience because if we don't it's just not going to be impactful people are going to be bored they're not going to be engaged with those visuals i mean sure they might be to a certain level if you've drawn a, a flat representation of reality but that's not really why people read comic books they read comic books to escape from reality that's why we consume anything movies video games we don't want to be in reality we're not focused on that we're trying to escape into another world with different characters and uh, and different rules in a lot of cases, especially in regards to comic books. So if you were to do, if we take a look here at uh, some representations of people in a more stylized manner, uh, cartoonified, you could say, and we look at a cartoon such as Kim Possible, very popular cartoon. Look at the size of her waist here. You know, that's like stick thin. It's it's absolutely tiny, highly, highly unrealistic. But kids love this stuff, right? Adults, some adults are, are totally into Kim Possible as well. And we like to see the same thing within our comic book art on top of it. So you might call this unrealistic. Is it successful? Yes, probably because it isn't super realistic. Look at the Powerpuff Girls here, right? Again, another lovable cartoon show. Highly unrealistic, but it still works. We still understand that they are women. Uh, very odd proportions there. Um, but yet, at the same time, people will jump onto J. Scott Campbell's work here, which is significantly more realistic, and uh, they'll hammer on it. You know, they'll 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 take they'll tear it apart. But the thing is, what these people aren't understanding is that it's not supposed to be real life. It's probably a cross between reality and a, a cartoon character, to be honest with you, as are many other comic books that are out there. Um, you know, you can see these, uh, these other characters here, and we start to get a little bit more closer to the aesthetic that you'll typically see within J. Scott Campbell's work. You can see the Disney princess here, which I'm pretty sure has influenced his style a lot. Uh, you can see the Flintstones lady, very big head, not realistic at all, once more. Um, and, and then you can see these other characters down here, one's from Scooby-Doo, not quite sure where the other one is from, but, you know, you get the idea. We're talking about two very different things. We're talking about highly stylized, exaggerated cartoon representations of reality, which don't need to be realistic. And in a way, when you think about the stories and the characters that you'll typically see within a comic book, uh, you know, their bios, their powers, the, the adventures that they go on, the, the fights that they have, those also are very, very re unrealistic. And you just wouldn't see a lot of what happens in a comic book actually happen in reality. And it, it's crazy to have to explain that to some people. But uh, it seems as though that is most definitely the case. But let's take a look at some artwork here that actually is supposed to be representative of real people. You know, they're very realistic. They've got proper proportions. They're rendered in an insanely realistic way. You know, here's a, here's a good old classic right there. Yeah, but 
are we trying to create this within comic book art? Is this something that we're trying to capture? Well, maybe in some cases, depending on the kind of style that comic book requires, but most of the time, not really. Um, again, some more classical fine art paintings here. You can see some, uh, you know, different styles of painting, but all the while they, they are representing realistic people. And so, you know, again, you're talking about uh, oranges and apples here, two very different things. And you want to try to consider that when it comes to how you take in comic book art. It's very similar to manga art, which is, if you look at that and the way in which the, everything is proportioned, especially in regards to the face, well... It, it's not supposed to be representative of reality. That's why when manga movies are then taken and converted into uh, feature films with real actors and real people, it oftentimes does not work because it just it wasn't meant for that. It wasn't stylized in that way. It was a world and a representation of a character in and of itself. All right, so let's take a look at some of J. Scott Campbell's actual influences in regards to his style. And you can see here that we're, we're looking at a fairly close comparison between these Disney princesses and uh, the way in which he has gone about illustrating Black Widow here. Okay, so again, this is in the realm not of reality, but of fiction and, and stylized cartoons. Um, yes, uh, J. Scott Campbell's style is a tiny bit more realistic than this, but not by much. In fact, uh, J. Scott Campbell even did an illustration series of the Disney princesses. And uh, yes, they're, they're sexy and they're beautiful and they're stunning and gorgeous. Uh, what a lot of people don't admit, either admit or realize, is that People like gorgeous, beautiful characters. That goes for men and that goes for women as well. In fact, there's, there's a lot of comparisons that you can draw between the two. Uh, you know, typically uh, a, a good butt on a woman is appealing, but also that can be said for a, a beautiful butt on a man. Uh, you know, typically people like to see big, broad shoulders on a muscular male character. That's what is appealing. That is the ideal, and it is the ideal for a reason, because it's what people see as the perfected version of, you know, I guess society or themselves, and that's great. That's not something that people don't want to see. They are drawn to it. Uh, you know, female character, again, just like with a man, a, a, a big chest, right, uh, sometimes, depending on what your tastes are you know and it's important to have a little bit of diversity there and and whatnot but still when you do see some of these idealized traits that have been incorporated into the anatomy and the proportions of the stylized comic book characters there's just uh, there's no doubt about it. People are going to be drawn to that. They want that. That's what's, And that's why it sells so incredibly well and probably why J. Scott Campbell gets a ton of work. It's appealing. You want to create work which is appealing, at least to a broader audience, if not everybody. And th why? Because, I mean, who, who's going to want to see unappealing work? I mean, maybe if that's exactly what uh, there's an audience out there that are and they're into that, they like looking at unappealing things. But otherwise, you want to try to create work which is as attractive as possible to your audience. Uh, so know your audience, I guess. And, you know, people keep on pulling out this uh, this quote, this, uh, this little snippet, uh, and they, they'll say, you know, well, this wasn't made for you. Well, maybe it just so happens that J. Scott Campbell's work isn't made for some people, uh, the, the few people out there who are, who are criticizing it so heavily and saying these awful things. You know, they're not constructive. They're just they're putting this guy down. All right, cool. So we've got J. Scott Campbell's uh, Disney princesses. Uh, now what I'd like to talk about is this article here, just to create a, a nice and, and hit the point home of, of the contrast between something which is you know, realistic and something which is stylized, at least in the way in which it's been interpreted. Uh, this article focuses on how Disney princesses would look if they were real. Right? It was 
of course, illustrations that uh, was put out there by a lingerie uh, brand, I believe. And uh, you can see some of them here, right? Now, the thing is, is that everybody goes on about realism in comic books, in cartoons, in, in animation, in these uh, non-reality type representations of the world. Yet, is it really something that is as desired as they believe? Because, uh, I mean, if you're looking at this, there is a clear, even though this is real, and it's it's great, you know, it's very realistic, and it's, it's wonderful. It's a much more realistic representation of maybe maybe realistic representation, we'll go get onto that in just a moment, of uh, this particular rendition of um, uh, the, the princess, Sleeping Beauty. Okay, if we go down, yeah, sure, you know, this is more realistic. I don't know what they've done to poor Ariel here, but, I mean, maybe, yeah, it's it's more realistic. They've adjusted the proportions, they've adjusted the, the body weight, and, uh, you know, okay, great. But is it more appealing? Does it achieve the goal at the end of the day that is, for the audience, something that they're going to find attractive and appealing, something that they're going to engage with, something that they're going to be into, or something that they're just going to pass by? Um, all the There's so many things out there that are biting for our attention, especially in this day and age. And unfortunately, if you're out there creating mediocre stuff that is tied to a regular, normal, everyday, mediocre reality, it's just not going to bring in an audience. It's, it's not going to capture their attention. Okay, so you can see, you know, again, and there's nothing wrong with these. They, they are exactly what they promise to be, realistic. But we're talking about what's more appealing. And it seems that the more unrealistic interpretation, at least within this context, with uh, varying idealized, more idealized proportions and anatomy, you could say, it seems to be more visually appealing. Now, that's to me. Ask yourself as the audience, you know, judge this as an individual, not based on what you've been told or what people are harping on about, but visually, do you f what do you find here out of these characters to be more attractive, more appealing, that draws you in? You know, and uh, I think that you will, if if you're honest with yourself about it, you'll find that of of course these these beautified Disney princesses, they they have the kind of body type which. We kind of look at, and maybe some people get jealous of because they're not that buddy type. Maybe they feel bad about it. I don't think that that is as, as evident as, as people make out because, you know, th these representations of people, I believe, give us something to uh, aspire to, want us to be like. Uh, they're representations of how we wish we could be, and that's, that's not a bad feeling, uh, at least for me, and I'm sure a lot of other people out there. We know that we'll never measure up to the... I know that I'll never be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I like seeing him in a movie, and I, I like to, to be engaged with that character, because while I'm engaged with it, within that movie, within that comic book, I get to be that idealized version of myself, right? Does that make sense? Um, and, and again, I mean, there's a very clear contrast here. There's nothing wrong or right between these two. It's just about the visual appeal. Okay, cool. So let's move on here to uh, the final uh, point that I'd like to touch on, which, you know, people talk about these realistic representations of reality and, uh, and they represent certain, you know, body types, of course. But it's important to remember that these more realistic representations of body types that a lot of the media, that uh, a lot of the, the bigger companies out there are trying to promote uh, in order to create a more, more diverse, I guess, cast of characters, the thing is, is that, yes, this is one interpretation of, of a realistic-looking character, but if you actually... I think that a, a real-life... Disney princess would look a little bit more like this, right? I mean, why wouldn't they look after themselves? Why wouldn't they appear elegant and beautiful and, and gorgeous? This is what we know a princess to be. She's not supposed to be a, an everyday regular person. Even if she was there in reality and, and you're standing in the room with her, she's supposed to e emanate 
there's, there's a certain level of, of glory and, and, again, beauty, and they're supposed to be stunning, right? I mean, the, the fact that they wear these gorgeous, beautiful dresses, that's, that speaks to that. They want to be glorified and, and, and glamorous. Okay, so, you know, this is what a, a princess looks like in, in real life. Uh, it's at least one representation of a real-life princess. Okay, and if you if you look at the waist here and, and you look at the dress and the, the structure of the face, and then you go back to, you know, the J. Scott Campbell's work here and the Disney princesses that he has illustrated, the Disney characters, um, it's it's not all that different. You know, it's, uh, it is a more, much more stylized version of this shore. But you can see that whether you're drawing something fictional, uh, whether you're drawing something realistic or, or stylized or what have you, you can have interpretations of that, that or, or visuals for that that are unappealing and visuals that are appealing. And it's completely up to you as to what you want to go for. But, you know, it's it's all down to, to your own taste. And I don't think that if your taste disagrees with another artist's uh, in, representation of how they've interpreted a character, if it if it clashes, it doesn't mean that you have the right to, to go out there and, and publicly uh, complain about it and, and say that things like you're nothing and... Oh, you know, you shouldn't be allowed to draw, you know, you should be cancelled or shut down or whatever. You know, that's what are these people trying to do, destroy individual expression? Because that's what, that's all that this is. This is J. Scott Campbell's individual way in which he likes to express the female figure and uh, this particular character, again, Black Widow. So I just wanted to talk about this in this video because I think that it's an important point to hit home. You know, being a comic book artist myself, this is something that I'm conscious, uh, constantly conscious of. And uh, I'm pretty sure I've been pulled up at least once or twice on the way in which I represent female characters and male characters for that matter. You know, I like big, bulky dudes that are unrealistic, lots of muscles that can carry guns that are way too heavy for them. That's what I enjoy visually and that's what I like to see. And, you know, every single artist out there is going to have their own way of looking at the world and then taking what they've learned about the world, what they enjoy about the world, the different genres that are out there, the different styles that have influenced their own, and they're going to want to put that down onto the page. And that is unique. That's special. If we were to draw just realism all the time, then there would be no there'd be no variation out there that would be confining our artistic expression. And for better or for worse, that should never, ever be the case. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this. And until next time, keep on creating, keep on drawing, and I'll see you in the next video.